Hi, I'm Dave and welcome to a tour of the uh, Can Chasers garage. And this is it. Uh, I always really like the joke from uh, Car Talk. This is Canyon Chaser's corporate headquarters. And I've really enjoyed the Revzilla videos where they're showing their garage. So, Moto Garage Tour. We are in the single car bay right now. The centerpiece of the whole garage and probably my favorite part of the whole garage is the motorcycle lift table. And the pickup truck is typically parked on top of that. So it has enough clearance that um, we can get all the cars in the garage as well as, as the motorcycles. And then Mrs. Canyon Chaser's car is parked over in the double car bay along with the wall of motorcycles. And then sitting right between the two big doors is uh, the no more tire changer. And I've done a whole video on this thing, but having a tire changer really makes life a lot better for a motorcyclist, especially once you start doing track days and you're, you're constantly swapping through tires. And then just to the other side of the single car bay is a wall of shelving, workbenches, the balancing stand, a very awesome poster to one of the greatest motorcycles ever. And then pit bull stands, I'm always trying to hang them up on the wall. They're big, they're heavy, they're awesome, but they take up a lot of space so I'm always trying to get things up onto the wall to clear as much floor space as possible and then working our way along the wall we have more shelving workbench space this is just a craftsman cabinet um, this is a motorcycle frame uh, just like Ari I've been using these um, silly little um, compostable um, lunch trays for tool organization for years. I think I bought like a pack of a hundred of them for $12 on Amazon like 10 years ago. But they are fantastic, Ari is right. And then the toolbox, the big massive toolbox. I really like to have everything labeled even though I'm in the garage all the time. I still seem to always like open three doors before you find the thing you're looking for. So I put labels on all my drawers so I can find what I'm looking for. Uh, relatively quickly. And then in the corner above the man door, we have our homemade tire rack. Uh, which is, again, once you have access to a tire changer, you tend to pull tires off early and uh, hopefully you'll use them again someday. And I never end up doing that. And some of these tires up here are close to 15 years old and I probably just need to throw those away. Um, but it is fantastic for track day tires. You go through those quicker. Um, you use different compounds for different temperatures and you can kind of like manage that a little bit better. So tire changers, again, make life a lot easier. And then every garage kind of has a, a place where things collect and that happens to be the corner where the man door is, you know, like all the stuff that's gonna be moving on to the Aprilia over the winter, hopefully uh, Scott's rear stand that needs to come pick up. Um, but you know, you have to have a place to put those random things, right? And then up above the pegboard, you can kind of see is I've saved almost all of my old helmet starting in the back corner right there. You can't really see it as my old original, my very first helmet, my old BFA. Um, and it's kind of amazing to see kind of how crappy they were back then and where they are now. Apparently I gravitate towards AGVs and a rise and they work their way across and the fancier of the helmets are actually in the house. We have a glass cabinet of some of our really favorite helmets. I don't know why we do that because we're motorcycle nerds. And then you know, like awards that I've won, signed posters, some MotoGP gifts, Andrea Davizioso 04 thing that they put on the, the hot pit when they pull in to check tire pressure and do things and a couple toys and random gifts that have been given to me over the years. And yeah, just kind of things that find their way into the garage, I guess. And then of course the back wall, you guys see that all the time. It's in every video, uh, the pegboard. I actually didn't put that up. Uh, the house came with it, but I honestly love having the pegboard. The tools that I use the most often are always right there. And you can kind of see at a glance if something's missing or kind of out of place. It really makes you know, working in the garage just go a little bit faster. Because honestly, I don't really love working on motorcycles. It's it's more that I'm cheap and that if I wanna be able to ride and do all the things you wanna do, you can save an incredible amount of money by doing things on your own. And it starts off easy, taking off a tire and oh, that wasn't so hard. And then you get into more advanced things. And before you know it, you're adjusting your own valves. And the key to that is just kinda of going slow and progressive and allowing yourself to to learn and asking lots of questions of, of good mechanics and good shops that you meet along the way. And then underneath the workbench, which I'm pretty sure is just a, a repurposed kitchen countertop, um, I keep a lot of things that you get too easy and fast, like your nitrile gloves, um, so you don't get chemicals in your hands, service manuals are under here, um, the really expensive rags, the, the roll of rags that you guys seem to always comment on, uh, the state of my rags if they are, if the roll is empty or full. And then you know, I wanna keep things that, things that you really should be using, but sometimes we get lazy and we don't wanna use. I try to keep those right at my fingertips. Uh, torque wrenches, use your torque wrench. That saves a lot of strip bolts. Safety glasses, you know, you're working on a bench grinder, you're hitting things with a hammer, put on safety glasses, make them easy to get to. Tire pressure gauge, um, when you look at crash data, um, it's kind of sad that overinflated and underinflated tires are terribly overrepresented in motorcycle crash data. So stay on top of your tire pressure, put a tire pressure gauge 
easy to get to and, and check it off. And then also underneath the workbench, I have a, a toolbox that's dedicated just for the track. I can just grab it and go, it has all those tools specific to that. And then because I do a lot with bicycles and it was getting confusing, I do have a toolbox that is just bicycle tools. And then of course, an old PC that has been repurposed as the, the garage computer. It is fantastic to be able to pull up schematics or look up torque values. Um, sometimes it's faster than using the service manual if you just need to like, oh, what's the torque of the axle? Computer right there. It's always great to go grab that. And then a channel supporter gave us this big giant TV, um, which is fantastic for, you know, sometimes I'll put the schematics up there and I can see it from over where the work table is. So thank you, Shorty, all those years ago for the, the big giant garage TV. And of course, no garage would be complete without the shop dog, the shop supervisor, the shop foreman, Chase the dog, he's getting kind of old now, so he mostly just sits here in his, in his chair and supervises the work, make sure that I'm using my torque wrench. And, and he gets very upset if I use, use four-letter words, bathroom words. So it's helped me clean up my language a little bit because he seems to be bothered by that. And then, of course, the bicycles. I'm a huge bicycle guy. The mountain bike season is wrapping up, but they're still down on the floor. The fat bikes for the snow season are hung from the ceiling. They will soon swap. Lots of shelving of chemicals and stuff like that. I really love these. Um, Lazy Susans, they're great for putting your chemicals on so you don't have to reach to the back of the shelf to try to find things. And then the wall of gear, all the motorcycle jackets, everything from ranging from the Gore-Tex to the vented street gear. Then the track gear is always in its bag up here. We can grab those, the leather suit, the helmet, everything's ready to go. So loading up for track day goes a little bit quicker. And then lots of towels and cleaning supplies and stuff are all kicked in back there. And then Mrs. Canyon Chaser's car, which she has uh, nicknamed Pat, you know, a lot of beige and sensible shoes. Some of you guys will get that joke. It's time for androgyny. Here comes Pat. And of course the motorcycles, which you guys ask about all the time. There's the Aprilia, which is the new purchase. It replaced the old 848. Uh, this winter it's gonna be going through a transformation to a full on track bike. We'll be dropping the tube bars. Um, some exciting things that I'm working on that I can't really talk about yet that uh, I'm looking forward to. Next we have uh, Mrs. Candy Chaser's Hyperstrata 821. Uh, this is probably one of the smaller touring bikes she's had in a while. She's gone from a Super Hawk to a Z1000 to a Ducati Super Sport, an old school one. Um, she had a Kawasaki Z1000, that I mentioned that one, that she loved. I think that was her favorite bike. A couple Multistratas. Then she went to the Hyperstrata A21, and she's really, really enjoyed it. But the, the seat pan on it is really wide, so it's harder for her to get her legs to the ground because it kind of splays you out. So I think she's tired of it. I suspect she's shopping for a... Yamaha MT-09 SP. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. She, she, you know, she does things like that. And then there's my 2012 Multistrada 1200. I got this when I was still kind of working with Ducati shops. I really, this has probably been one of my favorite motorcycles I've ever owned. I feel like Ducati sat down and said, let's make a motorcycle for Dave. Let's make a motorcycle for how Dave rides. And that's where the Multistrada 12 came from. I really think the 2012 is the best year of these bikes. It was the last year of the only in suspension. Um, and then they kind of moved into the variable valve timing and they got more complicated and you know, all the, the stuff. And this is kind of like the last of the simpler ones. I haven't done a whole lot to it. I put the smaller carbon fiber windscreen on it. I think big windscreens suck. I think they just create more turbulence. I don't like them. I tend to always put the smallest windscreen I can on there. Of course, I'm not especially tall. I put on forged wheels and, um, Lots of miles, lots of tires. Um, the bike has been a peach. I think it's 10 years old now and it's never missed a beat. Fantastic motorcycle. And then you guys know all about uh, Mrs. Canyon Chaser's uh, KTM 390. Uh, she's had a great time on that thing. You can see the tires are all chewed up and blued. She's having a lot of fun. I think she's already ready to start moving to a bigger motorcycle. So I think she's gonna have to choose which one she goes with next. I suspect that one's gonna go away next and this one will will stick around for another year or two. And then last is my freaking Zuma. I love my Zuma. Of all the motorcycles in this garage, you know, one, two, five, this one probably gets ridden the most. Um, if, if you don't love scooters, I don't think you actually love motorcycles. Scooters are fantastic. And I've done way too much to this thing. I, I powder coated the wheels. I put on um, a big bore kit and lightened the weights inside the pulley and it's got a shock on it and a high performance carburetor. Um, it's a 50cc scooter that probably now will go close to 70 miles an hour. I've, I've kind of ruined it, to be honest with you. Um, I'm really curious about an electric one, but this thing just, it, it's always in and out of the garage. I'm running to the post office, whatever. I freaking love my Zuma. Zumas are amazing. Well, not just Zumas, all scooters are amazing. Scooters are fantastic. So give them a chance. If, if, and wave to the scooter folk. 
you know, some of us are actually full on motorcyclists. One of my favorite things to do with the scooter, I really love this, is like a lot of times the Harley guys will wave and they take the wave back. And uh, I think that's just hilarious. So I usually respond with like a big dorky wave and you see, you know, they're more embarrassed about it than I am, amazingly. And that's basically it. That is the Canyon Chasers corporate headquarters, a modest three car garage in the suburbs. Uh, a lot happens in here. It's, a, it's an active place. It's probably the most active room in the house. It's a little bit like Tetris in here. I keep it really tidy and everything is in its place because if things start kind of moving around, you're tripping over things and it just becomes less efficient. Of course, I would like more space. Everybody would like more space, but I'm pretty happy to have this. It's the biggest, nicest shop I've ever had my whole life and I love that I can get all the vehicles in it once. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see more, let me know in the comments. Ride on and ride well.